Welcome back. You're watching on continuing coverage here in Davos 2023. Uh, the edtech sector was in focus through the course of the pandemic. It is going through its own corrections in India. We've seen what's happened to companies like Baiju's. But joining us now to talk about what the road ahead looks like is Jeff from Coursera. Jeff, many thanks for joining us. Always good to have you. And it's nice to be back. Let me start by asking you about where we are in terms of the correction that the edtech sector is seeing at this point in time. Uh, do you expect it to get worse or do you think that things are now going to stabilize? I think it's different. I mean, if you look at the ed tech sector in China, I mean, that had a major change, structural change because of policy. I think K through 12 is experiencing different things in different parts of the world. What we're seeing at Coursera in adult education is interesting. It's sort of a moving into the hybrid world. So it was one thing during the pandemic when everybody had to learn online, whether you're in a campus or whether you're in a business. Of course, that really propelled the, the, the company forward. And now what we're seeing is a lot more embracing of hybrid, hybrid learning and hybrid work. And so we're seeing, though, that skills are as important as ever. Mm. I think with AI, it's going to change even faster and online is going to be important. I'll get to AI in just a second. But you know, let's talk about hybrid work, because more and more companies at this point in time are asking people to come back and specifically in the tech sector as well. So, you know, are, are we overestimating this hybrid work assumption? I think it's interesting. Uh, what we do at Coursera is we have a policy that we call work from anywhere. Mm. We have offices, but we don't force people to come back. One of the things that allows us to do is hire people anywhere in the world. And in India, we went from about 50 people to over 300. Instead of three set at cities, it's now 26. Mm. So all over India, we have people working for, for Coursera. I was just in Kerala the other day, uh -huh. and we had an employee that I met up. We have two employees in Kerala. They both work remotely. And so I think it really, in order to really tap into the global talent pool, forcing people to come to an office limits your mm. choices. Mm. It also has a much harder impact on women, especially women with children. Yeah. So we want to have a more diverse workforce. We want to find the best talent mm. in the world. And so we're really committed to work from anywhere. Well, overnight headlines are all about uh, the tech sector laying off more people. Microsoft now announcing yep. more layoffs and uh, tech companies giving up real estate as well. Is that something that uh, you're looking at on both counts? You know, the day before we shut the offices during the pandemic, it was like March 16th of 2020, we had just opened up another 60,000 feet in Mountain View. Before we reopened the offices, we had already sublet the office that we had just opened up. Nobody ever sat in it. Mm. Um, we still have offices, but the utilization of office space is much lower. What we're doing is we're taking the money that we saved from subletting that space and we're using it to buy WeWorks passes for every single employee so people can still get together, mm. but on a more flexible basis. And for those employees where there's not WeWork, we'll give $1,000 a year mm. to basically rent flexible space to meet their needs. Mm -hmm. Laying off? Sorry? Laying off? Uh, in terms of Coursera? Yes. Well, you know, we've all had to make adjustments as, as the bigger companies have, but we kind of saw that more in 2022. We mostly stopped and really slowed down our hiring around June of 2022 mm -hmm. Because we saw macroeconomic conditions were looking a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. Given the macroeconomic conditions are looking tougher, Jeff, uh, you know, what is that going to mean both in terms of revenue as well as the ability to be able to cut down losses from here on? Because that seems to be the focus everywhere, especially in India, where startups are being pushed to now deliver on a path to profitability. Yeah, I think that, uh, as we have said before, pacing is kind of the key. Growth companies have to grow. And so what you always want to be thinking about is how do you position your business to, to be playing into very large opportunities where you have a distinctive advantage? You don't want to shortchange the investment when there's a big growth opportunity in front of you. That's why you step on the gas, and that's what we saw 2020, 2021, 2022. But when the growth slows down a bit, you want to pull back and, and pace. So I think that generally speaking, it still is important forever for, for growth companies to focus on growth, mm. um, play into the big markets to their advantages, but pace your growth according to what you can really deliver with the money spent. So mm. path to profitability is a bit more important, but ultimately it's about cash reserves and burn rate. So we have $800 million. We're not running, uh, worried about running out of cash. We're going to be moving towards profitability, mm. but we're not going to take our eye off of growth. Not taking your eye off growth and moving towards profitability, but uh, you know what is that going to mean when you talk about pacing yourself and pacing growth uh, in terms of choices? What is that going to mean for Coursera specifically? Well, you know, a lot of what it means is um, which types of products do you want to be building and investing in? Which types of markets do you really want to be putting sales and marketing resources against? What we have basically done is we've said, where have we seen the lowest leverage on spend? So mm. per dollar spent, what is the revenue that we get of the bookings that we get? When we look across our products and regions, we found regions 
where certain products just weren't having the ROI. We said, mm -hmm. you know what, maybe we'll come back to that uh, when, when sort of the, the general macroeconomic conditions get a little bit better. But until then, we're going to double down on the things that are working. Well, you know, the things that are working for Coursera are markets like India. Uh, that's so, for sure. Uh, so, you know, how much more can we expect you to double down there? What's the expectation in terms of being able to continue to grow that market? Well, we typically pace our spending with both the opportunity and the realized growth rates. The opportunity in India is larger than anywhere else in the world. I mean, that's one of the themes in, in Davos that we've been hearing. The size of the population and the young population and the fact that there's yeah. so much English speaking and with the new education policy, it is visionary, honestly, across mm. all education policies. Mm -hmm. The idea that any university can integrate up to 40% of credits towards a college degree online, it's just really going to create so much capacity, mm -hmm. which is one big thing. But the other one is once you start moving online, you can start integrating other courses into the curriculum. It could be more advanced yeah. in terms of tech. It could be more cross-disciplinary, so you could have more well-rounded graduates. And with AI coming, AI comes in on these technology platforms. So the availability of AI to help improve the learning experience, not only just offer new content, right. but improve the learning experience, will be available to schools who embrace online learning. So in light of the new education policy, you know, in terms of conversations that you're having, partnerships that you're inking in India, mm -hmm. to be able to offer the kinds of courses that you spoke of, where do things stand? Well, we continue to see great traction among universities who are integrating especially career electives into their curriculum. And career electives are basically industry micro-credentials from IBM, from Google, from Meta, from, Facebook, from, um, from Intuit. They're basically job training programs. Mm. But when a student goes to get their degree, they can get their degree in psychology and a Google certificate in UX design and graduate with two credentials, mm. a degree credential and an industry credential. And that's really going to open up an awful lot of uh, opportunities. And so we're seeing more and more universities in India, especially with the new University Grant Commission ruling on the 40% credits, where a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. And then even companies, uh, we just uh, append a deal with Reliance, where they're buying Coursera not only for all of their employees, okay. but all the families of their employees, which is a huge investment of human. And a huge number. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a big number. 200,000 employees and their families will have the ability top skill and that's the kind of investment that we see happening all across India in universities and in some of the biggest best uh, companies and I think really supported by the government you know you brought up AI thrice since we uh, started this conversation uh, chat GPT you think it's exciting but also dangerous yeah. uh, explain that to me well it's it's a revolutionary technology I, I've I use it every day I've just been trying to wrap my head around this I'm an English major and my wife is an evolutionary biologist. And you know, humans are called homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. That means wise man. Um, and one of the things we've always done is we made tools. The best tool that we ever made is language. Language and the capacity to create language mm -hmm. was the most defining tool of humans. The second perhaps most powerful tool was writing, written yeah. language. Because yeah. then you could pass ideas across cultures and yeah. across time. What AI is now doing, and this is fairly recent, just mm -hmm. the last couple of years yeah. with generative AI, not only can you record and store language, you can now generate language and generate ideas. So I think it's a very big idea. I think it's going to change education. It'll change the way we learn. It will change the way that we work. So how are you incorporating uh, the use of AI into Coursera? Because as you said, that it could be a possible game changer as far as education is concerned. But also, what are you worried about today, mm -hmm. uh, given the fact that it's sort of come at us fairly quickly and out of the blue with chat GPT. I mean, it's, you know, conversations that parents are having with their kids, kids yeah. are having with other kids. Uh, it's taken the world quite by storm. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about chat GPT that is so different to me is that um, most tools um, are thinking tools, but this is a thinking tool that thinks. Now, it doesn't think the way the human brain does, but it does recombine patterns of words to recombine patterns of ideas. Mm. And so I use it as a writing assistant personally and a thought partner. But in what does that mean, a, a thought partner? Oh, well, if I'm thinking about something, if I'm thinking about a strategy, if I'm thinking about how to organize the company, if I'm thinking about a certain product idea, I'll, I'll, go, I'll talk to Chat Chappie. Are say, you serious? Absolutely. <laughs> what do you think about this? How, I, I often start with, how should I be thinking about, and I'll put in the statement. And it sort of outlines it, and I'll sort of query it a little bit, and then I'll do my own thinking, put my own critical. Mm. It's, but it's like a thought partner. I go back and forth. And it's working for you. It's, it's tremendous. Now, you have to have good critical thinking. To your point around the dangers, sometimes it says stuff that's just flat out false. 
And so you can't, at this, now I think it's going to improve a lot, and that's probably this idea of hallucination. That's what they call it when it comes up with just fake stuff. But if you use it and, and put your own critical thinking on mm. it, it can really help round out your thinking, mm. test your eye thinking, and, and even expand your ideas. And for writing, it's incredibly good. So if you know what you want to say, it can help you say it. How we integrate it into Coursera? Well, we've already integrated AI in terms of predictive AI with search. We've already integrated with in-course coach where uh, we will watch a, a learner's experience mm. and we'll sort of say, hey, you're coming on to a hard mm. assessment. Here are some things you might want to review. But this new world of generative AI is yeah. going to help our instructors generate content and it's going to help learners have more interactive experiences with the content. You know, I'm intrigued by this idea that you've been using it as a thought partner, as a writing partner. Yeah. How effective has it been for you? It's, I'm an English major. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's really good. Yeah? It's really good. Now, here's my sense of it. There's a lot of people who use it. They're like, oh, it does this wrong. It has these biases. There's definitely a lot of things it needs to fix. But if you, what I found thought, with thoughtful use, uh, it is an incredible tool. And, you know, we talk about the digital divide. Mm -hmm. The penalty of the digital divide, those who are connected and those who are not connected to the Internet, is going to get much bigger. Before, I mean, till today, it was really like, do you have access to information? But what it's soon going to be is, do you have access to a thought partner? Mm. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, I'm going to have to experiment with this idea as well. Jeff, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks so much for joining us here in Davos, and I uh, look forward to seeing you back in India. Thank you. Co-presented by Bank of Baroda.